The key focus of this lecture is on drag and lift forces acting on a tidal current turbine. A tidal current turbine embedded into a boundary layer experiences forces that are acting on this turbine. An object in a tidal current stream experiences a hydrodynamic load that is conveyed from the tidal current stream on that object. So what is this force? An object in a tidal current flow is subjected to a force that is composed of two components, the drag force acting in line with the direction of the flow and the lift force acting at 90 degrees to the direction of water flow. For example, we have flow from left to right and an object placed within this tidal current flow. Then the resultant force includes two components. The drag force that is in line with the direction of the flow and the lift force. This is acting at 90 degrees to the direction of the flow. And now example. The coordinate system I will be using in this lecture is horizontal axis X and vertical axis Z. The magnitudes of the drag and lift forces depend on the shape of the object, also depend on the roughness of the object surface, orientation of this object uh, to the direction of the water flow and the velocity of the water flow. Drag force which is also defined as resistance to motion, is equal to the component of the resultant force in the direction of the relative flow ahead of the body. And lift force, which is component of resultant force, normal to the direction of the relative flow ahead of the body. And not all bodies generate lift force. Let's start with the total drag force. The total drag force acting on a body can be divided into two components. Friction drag, or sometimes it's also called skin friction, and this component of the total drag force is due to the tangential stresses that are acting on the surface of the body. And also pressure drag, also sometimes called form drag, and this is due to normal stresses acting on the surface of the body. Let's consider uh, the body. We have flow from left to right, and we have total drag force, that is horizontal component or component of the resultant force acting in the same direction as the flow direction. And there are two components of the total drag force. The skin friction I define as tau F, F is friction, and pressure drag or form drag and these two components contribute to the total drag force. To obtain total drag force we need to do integration over the whole surface area of an object and add those forces first by taking projection of each component onto the same direction as direction of the flow. Ds here is an elementary surface area on the surface of the object. Let's see how the skin friction component of the total drag force can be estimated. The total skin friction of the total surface area, or sometimes it's also called wetted area, or surface area where body is in contact with fluid, is equal to the sum of individual skin friction forces acting on elemental area ds. We know that individual skin friction force is due to tangential stress acting on the body because it's a curvature on the body depending which point you are considering direction of this tangential stress will change. So to estimate the total skin friction, we need to estimate the total surface area or bedded area. The total surface area can be estimated by integrating over the whole uh, surface area of the body, or we can calculate this by simply uh, doing summation of individual DS surface areas that are on our body. And since 
depends on which point on the body you are considering, direction of tangential stress will always be tangential and will change. We need to estimate projection of these stresses on the direction of the flow. And in our example, example direction of the flow is horizontal direction or on x axis. Individual, so the total skin friction can be estimated using Newton's law of viscosity, where n is just the unit vector which is normal to the body and directed into the fluid, and ds is elemental surface area. So to add all this um, individual skin friction, as I said, we need to take projection because depending on which point, the direction or the unit normal vector is always normal to the body, but this is tangential at that particular point. The skin friction on an element of the area ds can be estimated as projected tau fx, which is projected tangential stress on the x direction, multiplied by the elemental area ds. So this is our skin friction component of the total direct force. Or just using geometry, we, replay, we substitute uh, projected tau fx, which is projection on x-axis, with um, tangential stress multiplied by cosine 90 minus theta and multiplied by ds. And to estimate the total skin friction, we do integration over the whole surface area or summation. So the total skin friction, drag force component. So this is our uh, D index is for drag force and SF is the skin friction, is the integration of the whole bedded area or surface area of the body. And this is our uh, stress, tangential stress acting on this um, DS elemental area multiplied by uh, sine theta. So now let's see how we can estimate the pressure drag component of the total drag force. To estimate the pressure drag component of the total drag force, we follow similar approach how we did with skin friction component. And the total pressure drag on the total surface area or bedded area would be equal to the sum of individual pressure forces acting on elemental area ds. Since the surface is curvature, we need to do integration of the whole body. First of all, we can estimate the total surface area by integrating over the whole surface area or doing summation of elementary ds areas. And we add individual pressure drag forces acting on the body uh, by uh, projecting each individual pressure drag force on the direction of the flow. So we take projection on the direction of the flow, similarly how we did it with skin friction. And I define this uh, Px, which is projection on the direction of the flow and multiplied by ds, px multiplied by ds will be individual pressure drag force acting on the surface elementary area is ds. So to estimate the pressure drag on elementary area ds, we estimate this individual uh, pressure drag force as Px, which is projection of um, pressure normal to the body, multiplied by ds, or using geometry, you just replace Px with pressure cosine theta ds. And to estimate the total pressure drag, we do integration over the whole surface area, or we do in summation of individual pressure drag forces.
So to obtain the total drag force, now we know the two components, which is skin friction and also pressure drag component of the total drag force. To calculate the total drag force, we just add these two components together. So skin friction, how we derived it from previous slide, plus the pressure drag, and this is our total drag force that is acting on the body. The total resultant force acting on an object placed in the tidal current flow consists of two components. Horizontal component, drag force, which is the total drag force, and vertical component, which is the total lift force. So similar to drag force, the lift force also has two mechanisms, viscous friction at the surface and effect of pressure. And we consider the uh, total lift force following similar approach as we consider the total drag force. So this is our object and we have two mechanisms, viscous friction at the surface and also effect of pressure. And now we need to consider vertical component of the resultant force, which is lift force. So we need to consider each of these, which are, will be projected on a vertical uh, axis, vertical direction. And just to remind you that our vertical direction is Z and horizontal direction is X. So starting with um, viscous friction or skin friction on the surface, we estimate the uh, lift force component of the viscous friction uh, by taking a projection of the viscous stress on a direction which is Z direction, vertical direction or direction of the total lift force. So this is my tau FZ, which is individual um, individual lift force acting on the body and this is my total lift force due to friction effects and now following similar uh, approach we estimate the total lift pressure force acting on the body and we also take projection on the pressure in vertical direction. To estimate the total lift, we just add these two individual components together. So this is our uh, component due to viscous fr uh, friction on the surface and this is our component due to effect of pressure. And lift force parameterization is uh, similar to parameterization of the drag force. So lift force can be calculated as 0.5 multiplied by lift coefficient, multiplied by density of the fluid, and multiplied by um, <coughs> reference velocity in power 2 and reference area. And for example, reference area could be area of the blade of a tidal current turbine. For a tidal turbine structure, the drag force is dominant, the lift force is negligible. So the main focus is on the drag force. But please note that at the scale of an individual blade, the lift force is important, as it's the lift force that drives the rotation of the turbine. So we know that the total drag force has two components, skin friction and pressure drag. So we can do parameterization of these two components using just standard equations engineers use, where, the, uh, where drag force is calculated as 0.5 multiplied by drag coefficient, multiplied by uh, density of the fluid, multiplied by reference velocity in power chill, and multiplied by reference area. So reference velocity is usually taken as approach velocity and reference um, area is a bit different for skin friction or pressure drag. For skin friction, this is total reference vetted area where skin friction force acts, and for pressure drag, this is the total reference projected area where pressure drag form, uh, force acts. 
So to calculate the total drag force, we just add these two components together and we have our equation, which is just standard equation. You're already familiar with this equation, where the total drag force is calculated as the drag coefficient multiplied by density of the fluid, multiplied by reference velocity in power tool, and multiplied by a reference projected area. For tidal current turbine, um, the dominant uh, component is the pressure drag. So quite often the reference projected area is taken as the reference area of the turbine. For example, for um, cylinder of the turbine, it's the height of the cylinder multiplied by the diameter. And CD coefficient is commonly taken from diagram. In your design, you can minimize one of the components of the total drag force. For example, you can minimize either skin friction component or pressure drag component. Depending on which component of the drag force you minimize, there are two different types of bodies, streamline and bluff bodies. So if the body shape is such that the flow separation is entirely avoided or occurs well towards the end of the body, then the skin friction is the key contributor to the total drag. And such body is called streamlined body. So the wake region is very small for this type of body. And if the body shape is such that there is substantial flow separation and the wake behind the body is large, then the pressure drag or form drag is the key contributor to the total drag. And such a body is called bluff body. So by changing the shape of the body, you can control your deck and minimize one of the components. So in the next lecture, we will consider how you can estimate the drag coefficient to calculate your drag force.